If you're selling physical or digital goods on Etsy, it can be really overwhelming when you start typing in search terms like gift or personalized, Christmas, the list goes on and on. Super high competitive niches. You get thousands and thousands of results and you're like, well, how do I compete with these listings? Where do I start? So in this video, I'm gonna walk through how you can stack keywords in order to increase your chances of being seen on Etsy. You can do it, let's jump in. Now the program I'm gonna be using in this video is called Everbee. It's a keyword research tool, so I'm clicking keyword research here on the left-hand side, and then I can search for anything here at the top. So for example, if I type in the words Father's Day and I click search, you're gonna see the search volume, that's per month. We're gonna see the competition, and then the keyword score. And so there's related keyword scores down at the bottom. So I'm gonna show you exactly how this works for me. Now, as we jump in, I just wanna mention Everbee is an awesome tool that I use. I'll put a link to Everbee in the video description below. Just a heads up, it is an affiliate link. That just means if you click on the link and you purchase the Everbee subscription, I would receive a small commission. Here I've typed in gift at the top, search volumes 20,000 plus, about 27,000, competitions over 42 million. That gives us a pretty bad keyword score. There's related keyword scores down at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this export button right here and you're gonna see a little window pops up. It says, hey, we're gonna send you an email. And this is the email that I actually get. It comes to my email address. I can simply download this now, and it's a CSV file. When I click download, I get this attachment right here. I can now download the CSV file to my hard drive. Okay, so if you're gonna be stacking keywords, there's really two ways you can do this. There's two different options, and they're sort of at the different ends of the spectrum here. The first one is the strategy for huge niches uh, but they have high competition. And so I'm gonna show you this one first. Then I'm gonna show you about tiny niches. I'll show you an example with low competition. So let's check out the one with high competition first. This is huge niches. So when you open up the Excel file, it's a CSV file, so the formatting is not gonna be great. You simply click in between the A and the one cell, double click on the columns, and you can see now it's gonna extrapolate it out so that the width of the column is the widest text. So we can see here we've got text along the left, and then we have the search volume, the competition, and the keyword score. So what I typically do is I'll highlight the top values. I'll make them a little bit different color, just like that. And then I'll highlight all four columns. I'll go to data, sort. I'll make sure my data has headers is turned on because I've highlighted the, all the columns. And then I'll sort this. In this case, I'm gonna sort by volumes. Normally I would sort by keyword score, but for this video, I'm actually gonna sort by volume, largest to smallest. Another thing I like to do is I'll just click row two, and I'll go to view, freeze panes, freeze panes, and now I can scroll down, and I can see it's starting with the largest volume, and it's going down to the smallest volume. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and just see if I detect any trends or any cool words that may come up. So here we can see custom personalized gifts, for example. That's one that I would highlight right there. We can see the keyword score is 10. I'm not saying that's the be all end all, but I'm saying that is something that I would certainly look for. Here's another one that comes up, custom personal gifts. So if you're doing customization, the keyword score here is pretty good at 310, and that's quite a popular search term. And you can see here's another one. This is gift for dot, dot, dot. Gift for, gift for him, gift for her. We can see that that's quite a popular search term as well. All right, so now I'm on Etsy and I'm gonna type in gift for, and we'll just see the autocomplete. Gift for her, gift for him, gift for home, gift for boyfriend, gift for box. So I'm gonna type in gift for her, and we're going to see back a whole lot of results. So I'm not suggesting this is just a one and done. We're gonna take a look at some popular listings and see the different keywords that they use. Okay, so here's one. This is a best friend cartoon portrait. They would run this through some sort of AI filter or they would have some sort of graphics design program like a Photoshop or Affinity Designer, but they've made a best friend portrait here and we can see this is a digital download. Now they've got things like ready in six hours, it's guaranteed. So these are all things that you can control as well that are outside the scope of keywords. But if we're talking about just being searched, Let's check this out, it says gift for her right there. And look at the other things we've got, friendship, custom, faceless portrait. So I would run this stuff as well, gift for bestie, for example. We can see that when we run this through Everbee, gift for bestie comes back with 2,500 competition. The keyword score is 30. It's not huge, but it's also not zero. So that's something that we would definitely want to keep in our 
wheelhouse that if we're creating something similar, use that search term. And as we can see here, of course, it's in 20 plus baskets. This is a pretty popular item. Here's another one. This is a custom line drawing and it says unique husband gift right here, gift for him. And this is $12.93. This is a digital download. It's in 20 plus baskets. Here's a really interesting one. This is personalized chocolate spread, label, vinyl, sticker, funny novelty gift, birthday anniversary. So it doesn't say gift for him or gift for her, but we can see it does say gift right here. And so gift is being picked up when we typed in gift for her or gift for bestie, whatever we do, gift pops up. This is a really cool design and it looks great. It's basically just a sticker and then you can stick it on your Nutella or your peanut butter, whatever it is. 29 people bought this in the last 24 hours. And it's basically a sticker here. So they've got a technology where they can print off a sticker. And I really like down below, you can see different pictures of people that are using it. I think that's really neat. So it's a really cool idea to create custom stickers for people. Okay, so let's take a look now at low volume niches. These are niches with low search volumes. Here's an example where I've typed in the word horror I get back 2,500 in a search volume competitions, a little under a million, keyword score is zero, not great. However, I'm gonna extrapolate this by hitting the export button and I'm gonna pull all the related keywords out into a spreadsheet. So here I am back in Excel, I've done the same thing. I've formatted my spreadsheet and now I've sorted it by volume and as I scroll on down, I can see things like the word spooky comes up. Now it's got a keyword score of zero, but spooky is something where I wouldn't necessarily have thought of that. And here we can see there's some other spookies up here. It's like, okay, I'll make a note of that. Horror was my original search term, but I'm gonna use spooky as well. As I scroll on down, I can see other things like gift, ghost, movies, decoration. And here's the one, horrors T or horrors T. Tease, and that gives me a pretty good keyword score. Retro horror movie gives me a good keyword score. And I really like this one, horror characters Halloween shirt. Of course, you wanna be cognizant of trademarks. Horror sweatshirt, that's a very basic term and that comes up on a high keyword score. Sublimation horror designs. A lot of people don't know to use the word sublimation if you're selling something, but if you're buying something, you might be looking for sublimation. And this was the big one that I was surprised to see, horror cute. It actually is a very low competition and very high search volume. I wouldn't have thought about cute when I was searching. So when I search for horror-cute in Everbee, it gives me a really high keyword score. I like to remove the dash and just double check. And we can see most people are searching for horror cute. The competition's much higher. The keyword score is still good at 10. It's not ideal, but it's something. So the combination of cute and spooky, ghost, movies, characters, I'm gonna see if there's anything on Etsy that matches those. So here's a great example of a listing that's doing very well. This is $25 for a digital download, or you could select something on canvas and the price jumps quite dramatically. I'm gonna leave it on digital file. We can see here it's custom vampire pet portrait. And the really keen people in the audience may notice this is supposed to be scary, but they've actually misspelled it. So there's always room to go in and improve your listing. That should say scary pet portrait instead, but it's personalized, pet lovers. So check out listings like this that are doing well and you can tell they're doing well because underneath you've got 480 shop reviews and you can see right here custom vampire pet portrait custom vampire pet portrait these are ones that people have actually purchased so here is a great example of somebody who's doing something really cool you've got different costumes and then you would supply the picture of your cat or your dog and they would take little Sparky and they would stick them on number 67 or number 77 and you'd get your customized print. It's a lot of work, but if you wanna make sales on Etsy and break in, this is the way to do it. Offer high quality, lots of options, and basically you gotta do a bit of work. This is not passive income by any stretch. Here's another option is junk journals. You can see here, they've got the word spooky right there. And another one that I just noticed is gothic, ephemera, vintage, so the combination of all of these is what helps you track in Etsy. You wouldn't only put spooky, you'd put the other ones in there as well. This is in 20 plus baskets, and this is basically junk journal pages. These are probably generated with AI, although maybe the person has you know a graphic arts background. They could even be old public domain images that they've helped restore, some old creepy photos some fantasy stuff, and it's easy to see why this is in 20 plus baskets. When you find a listing like this that has 20 plus views or multiple purchases, multiple reviews, take a look at right here at the keywords they're using, and then also look down here in the actual listing itself. 
the details because that's where the keywords are sitting up here in the listing and also down in the actual description. And make sure you've got great looking thumbnails and of course, make sure you offer great customer service as well. I really hope you found this video helpful. I love using Everbee. Again, I'll put a link in the video description below. Here's another video on how you can supercharge your selling journey and have some fun doing it.